As you can see, we have a very packed agenda with guests who have dedicated their careers to being change makers and culture shakers. And so without a further ado, it's my privilege to introduce you to our director of the Minnesota Job Skills Partnership, Jody Greasing. Jody. All right. Thank you for the introduction, Jess. Um, good morning, everyone. And thank you for having us here today with for Workforce Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to give a overview of some of the programs that we offer um, for employers for workforce training. Uh, so to get started here, um, we can move to the next slide. Who we are. So the Minnesota Job Skills Partnership Office is housed in the Department of Employment and Economic Development, and we provide grants to businesses, educational institutions, and nonprofit organizations to train or retrain workers, expand work opportunities, and keep high quality jobs in the state. Uh, we have five different programs that we administer out of our office. They are the Partnership Program, Pathways, Low Income Worker Training Program, Job Training Incentive Program, and the Automation Training Incentive Program. Uh, the Partnership Pathways and Low Income Worker Training Programs are overseen by a board, the Minnesota Job Skills Partnership Board, um, which consists of 12 board members. Uh, we have our commissioner of deed as the chair of that board. And then we have uh, different representatives from education, business, nonprofit organizations that serve on the board. Uh, today, we are going to provide um, an overview of our partnership program, our job training incentive program, and the automation training incentive program. Um, next slide, please. So to start out, our um, our overall purpose or the goals of our programs are to help promote economic development uh, by providing workers with the skills that businesses need to stay competitive. Uh, our second goal is to help build capacity at our Minnesota educational institutions uh, so that they are being responsive to business needs. And then the third is to provide economic opportunity for workers, um, providing them with the training they need to get or retain a job. Next slide, please. We're going to start out with our partnership program. Uh, the specific purpose of this program is to act as a catalyst to bring employers with specific training needs together with educational institutions that can design and deliver programs to meet those needs. So through this program, we offer grants of up to $400,000. They go directly to an educational institution that is partnering with a business or a consortium of businesses. Uh, to develop and deliver training specific to the business needs. Uh, the program requires a one-to-one -one match from the business partners, which can be cash or in-kind contributions. So most of the match typically comes from wages paid to the employees while they're in training. I would say probably at least 80% of the match comes from that alone. Um, and then also the businesses are usually involved in helping develop the curriculum. Um, most of the training typically takes place on site at the business. So those types of things can also count towards that in-kind match requirement. Uh, the program can be used to train both new or incumbent workers. And then these projects typically run from one to three years. Uh, next slide, please. It's just a little visual here of the different industries that we've we served through the program and the re uh, recent years. Uh, most of our grants go to man the manufacturing industry. It's about 65% of our grants are to the manufacturing industry, um, followed by construction at about 11%. And after that, it's healthcare at about 8%. And then you can see various other industries. Um, we don't have any requirements or um, specific industries that we serve. It's open to all industries, but we do focus on um, training for full-time permanent jobs that provide livable wages. Uh, some of the training trends that we, we've seen over the past few years is a lot of succession planning training, um, training on emerging technology, automation, and then training that addresses worker shortages. Next slide, please. And these are some of the business outcomes um, from our training programs. Um, based on responses from businesses. So you'll see there that about 75% of the businesses participating in our program say that the training helped improve the retention of their employees. 71% uh, said it improved employee motivation and morale. 67% indicated it improved productivity. 65% um, said it improved quality. 
Um, and then some of the other areas, it's helped improve customer satisfaction. It's helped the businesses reduce scrap waste and rework. It helps them reduce downtime, increase on-time delivery, reduces lead time, helps increase sales, helps uh, reduce accidents. And then we have some an opportunity for them to tell us other outcomes. Uh, next slide, please. A little bit about the application process. So if a business is in interested in um, receiving a partnership grant, the first step would be to partner with an accredited educational institution. Uh, most of our projects are through our state's um, community and technical colleges and through their continuing education or customized training divisions. Uh, once you've partnered with an educational institution, you'll sit down with them, determine the training needs, develop a training plan and a budget. Um, the educational institution is technically the grantee, so they usually do the bulk of the grant writing. Um, some educational institutions hire a grant writer uh, and ask the business to pay for the grant writing. Uh, once the grant proposal is prepared, you submit the application to the Job Skills Partnership. Uh, we accept applications three times a year, um, typically up deadlines in January, um, May, and September. Uh, once we receive those applications, staff reviews them, we score them, and we write up a summary and recommendation for our board. And then our board meets three times a year to make funding decisions on those grant proposals. Uh, next slide, please. A little bit about the reporting requirements. So again, the educational institution for these grants is technically the grantee, so they are responsible for the majority of the reporting. Um, but the, what the business does need to do is because by statute, they have to match that the grant. Um, they do need to track and report their matching contributions. They need to provide information on the trainees, the number of people training, some of the demographics of the trainees. Uh, we ask them to submit a progress report every eight months, which is just uh, a one page form that asks them how they feel the project's going, if there are any issues or concerns. And then they also do a final project evaluation at the end of the project. Next slide. So next we're going to go over our job training incentive program. Uh, the specific purpose of this program is to provide grants to new or expanding businesses located in greater Minnesota for the purpose of training new workers as quickly and efficiently as possible. This program provides grants of up to $200,000 and these grants go directly to the business. Um, again, the business must be located in greater Minnesota to be eligible for this program. And the business is eligible for between $5,000 to $9,000 per new job that they are going to be creating. For this program, the business must match the grant on a $0.50 cents to $1 basis. The new jobs must be permanent full-time positions, and they must pay wages of at least 120% of federal poverty guidelines for a family of four. And I believe, let's see, what is that current rate is about um, 17, I believe it's around $17, $17.87 per hour is the current uh, rate for 2024. This program offers a little more flexibility than our partnership program in that um, the partnership program does require that the training is provided by an accredited educational institution, whereas this program, the training can be provided uh, through an educational institution, through a consultant, through the equipment vendor, or it can be provided in-house. Um, for this program, most of the businesses uh, do the training in-house. Um, and then for that business match, the 50 cents to the dollar, uh, um, that match can also be cash or income contributions. Um, and essentially, this means that the JTIP program will fund two thirds of the costs and the business will pay the other third. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, these the grant funds uh, can be used for direct training costs. So that would include um, training fees if, if you're going through um, an outside training provider. Uh, it can be used if you're doing the training in-house, the, the grant can be used to tr pay your trainer. Uh, it can also be used to pay the wages of your trainee, your employees while they're being trained. 
Uh, it can also be used for training materials and supplies or training equipment. Uh, these projects typically run for about a year. They are awarded on a first come first serve basis by the Commissioner of Deed. Um, if awarded, the business is asked to pay a $500 application fee. Um, and then we require progress reports every six months, a final report at the end of the project. Uh, the payment is made on a reimbursement basis at the end of the project. The business does have to track all of the track and report the program costs um, and su submit supporting documentation for those costs. And next slide. And then finally, we have our automation training incentive program. The specific purpose of this, pro this program is to provide training grants to assist small businesses located in greater Minnesota in the adoption of new automation equipment or technology. So through this program, we provide grants of up to $35,000 to businesses that have 150 or fewer employees. Um, so the purpose is to train it, those employees on any new automation equipment or technology that the business has recently invested in. And up to $5,000 per trainee is available, up to that maximum of $35,000. Uh, like the JTIP program, um, this program also requires that the jobs pay wages of at least 120% of federal poverty guidelines for a family of four. Um, also requires that they're full-time permanent positions. And again, the grant funds are used to pay for the direct training costs, including training wages. Uh, next slide, please. This program, uh, similar to JTIP, uh, is very flexible in who the training provider can be. Again, you can use an educational institution, you can go through a consultant, the equipment vendor, or provide the training yourself in-house. Um, through this program, I would say we most frequently see training that's being provided by the equipment vendor. These projects typically run, I'd say, more six, six months to a year. They're usually pretty short-term projects. Um, similar to the JTIP program, they're awarded on a first-come, first-served basis by the Commissioner of Deed. And the reporting requirements are also very similar to, to JTIP. Um, there's one report due at the conclusion of the project, and then um, we do try to follow up one year later to just see what some of the longer-term impacts of the automation um, and the training were. Um, and again, the business is responsible for tracking and reporting their costs and providing supporting documentation for those costs, and they are reimbursed at the end of the project. And this program also has a $500 application fee uh, for projects that are awarded. And next slide. So the application process for the JTIP and ATIP programs are the same. Um, the applications are available on our website. And again, we accept these, these applications on a year-round basis, first come, first serve, as long as funds are available. In order to be awarded, uh, the applicant must receive at least 30 points on our evaluation. We do have our scoring criteria outlined in our program and application guide on our website. Uh, again, these grants are approved by the Commissioner of Deed. And MJSP staff is available to help and guide you through the application process. So I would say any business that is interested in any of our workforce training programs um, can contact our grant coordinators, um, talk about what it is you're looking to do. We can help guide you to the program that's the best fit for you. Um, and then I will say our grant coordinators are extremely helpful um, and really work, especially through the JTIP and ATIP programs that go directly to the business where they're the, the applicant. Um, our coordinators work very closely um, with you throughout the application process and um, they will communicate with you throughout the process. Um, next slide. These are links to our website where you can um, find additional information. You can find our application forms and program guides. Um, you can find application deadlines for our partnership program. Um, and you can also find, um, you can also review a list of some of our previously funded projects uh, with some summaries of what those projects look like. And next slide. And this is our contact information. So we have um, our two grant coordinators. We have Danielle Cresson, who works with businesses in the, in the northern half of the state. And then we have Vicki Poloni, who works with businesses in the southern part of the state. 
And then for our partnership program, they kind of split the metro. And I believe that concludes my portion. Excellent. Great job, Jody. Um, very thorough. We don't see a lot of questions coming in yet for you. So hopefully we'll see some of them in the unplugged um, from the group. Uh, next, we're going to hop into um, our panelists that are here joining us. We have three of them and these are our actual um, subject matter experts per se that uh, have actually used these programs. So we want to make sure to recognize them um, for working with DEED and thank them as well as um, kind of pick their brains on what they've done and how they've worked with them. So Jessica Wells is the general manager at Two Rivers Enterprises, and she actually worked on the automation training incentive program. We also have Eric Sorensen, who's HR specialist at Air Corps Aviation, and they have taken um, and use the job training incentive program. And then we also have Tanya Sigurdsson, uh, who is custom training representative at South Central College in Mankato area. And they have um, helped employers use the partnership program. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the three of them and do a little personal um, bio. So Jessica, we're gonna start with you. If you could do us uh, the favor and do a little intro on yourself and on Two Rivers Enterprises. Sure, thank you. Um, so my name is Jessica Wells and uh, Two Rivers Enterprises is a custom stainless steel manufacturing company. Um, we serve food processing and restaurant industries. Um, we have about 45 employees and we're located in Holding Ford, Minnesota. Types of equipment that we design and manufacture are conveyors, dumpers, platforms, mezzanines, um, different work carts, and then custom restaurant equipment. Um, so we participated in or in the automation training grant. We purchased a Bistronic laser table in 2023, and then our initial operators went on site to receive their training. Uh, we had some turnover and change with operators and needed some additional training, so we applied for the automation training um, incentive grant. Um, so the vendor actually came on site and did some basic training, some troubleshoot training, and then some maintenance training with our operators and manufacturing engineer. We had three employees that participated in the training, um, and this was the equipment vendor that came on site. This actually helped improve um, efficiency gains so that we could have decreased downtime and that the employees um, we're more comfortable of running the machine, as well as the new operators getting some of that basic training. Um, they were able to get specific skills, and then with troubleshooting, if there's any errors that come up on the machine, um, they were able to troubleshoot that. And it was nice to be able to work with the vendor on site. We were still able to run production and cut our parts versus if we had to send the employees out to the vendor site um, and have downtime. It also, the grant helped with cost offsetting. So being able to receive the grant, um, it was 5,000 per employee. So we were awarded the 15,000, which covered both of the two classes with the vendor. So it was the basic training and troubleshooting and then the maintenance. Um, class. So we were able to set up also our own maintenance program here that the operators could continue to do. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. Appreciate it. And next we're going to um, talk to Eric Sorensen. Again, he's the HR specialist at Air Corps Aviation. Yeah, Eric? thank you. Um, so we're Air Corps Aviation. We're based in Bemidji, Minnesota. And we specialize in the restoration and um, maintenance of especially World War II era military aircraft and other legacy aircraft. Um, so that's the, the largest part of our business, I would say, but we also have um, fabrication um, 
capabilities and are certified through the FAA to produce um, custom parts for uh, newer model aircraft and other restorations, either that we do in-house here or um, other restoration companies will, will contract us to make parts for them. Um, in terms of aircraft, I can throw some, some names out that maybe some of you would be familiar with. So World War II aircraft would be like a P-38 Lightning or a P-47 Thunderbolt or um, another popular model was the P-51 Mustang. Um, so those are sort of the aircraft that we work on. And what makes our business unique and, and how we use JTIP um, is on the restoration side in particular is a lot of the skills that go into restoring these, these aircraft have sort of been lost to time. Um, you know, we're not, we're not manufacturing those planes anymore. And a lot of the knowledge and experience that was used to build those planes during World War II is, is gone. Um, so how we used JTIP is leveraging our in-house experts, um, the ones that have a lot of experience restoring these planes and a lot of and have a lot of expertise and knowledge. Um, we use those to bring in around 12 new employees to be trained by those experts in-house that we have. Um, it was a big need for us because a typical restoration might be 40,000 labor hours to um, complete start to finish. So we were in a position where we had to turn away a lot of projects because uh, just staffing issues. It's hard to find um, people with the skills to work on these projects, um, uh, you know, efficiently and um, find people who can hit the ground running, I guess I would say. So, um, yeah, like I said, we, we brought in um, 12 new employees and created our own little training program um, in where our more experienced restoration experts um, would, would sit down and train on an on-the-job type setting these new employees on the skills needed. Um, so that really helped us, um, you know, grow our capacity uh, for restoration and also free up some, some capacity to explore new, new avenues for the business. So all in all, it was very, very helpful for us in terms of getting people who, getting new employees who maybe don't have all the, the skills, um, but have the, the, the work ethic and people who are a good culture fit for Air Corps Aviation. Um, we'd like to say that we don't necessarily always hire for the skills, but we hire for the person. Um, you know, we can, we can train people um, and teach people what we need them to do. Um, most important for us is to find a culture fit, and that's an easier find for us than someone who has years of experience restoring World War II aircraft, as you can imagine. So um, JTIP was super helpful um, in terms of getting uh, that program up and running. Awesome. And Eric, on average, do you know how much um, assistance you got per new hire? Yeah, I think it was around 6000 per hire. Um, Perfect. And we use that in a, a, to, to help offset some of their wages, uh, those new employees' wages, um, through the training program. Perfect. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. And next we have Tanya Sigurdsson, and she is from South Central College, and she's going to give us a little um, background on, on herself as well as the partnership grant. Tanya? Yes, thank you very much for having me here today, Tanya Sigurdsson. Uh, I'm a part of the Customized Workforce Education Department here at South Central College. Uh, we do have campuses in both North Mankato and Faribault, Minnesota. Um, I have been here on the team for nearly nine years uh, where um, I do the uh, majority of the project management for our Minnesota Job Skills Partnership grants. Um, our department has worked with both the long form, which Jody mentioned is up to $400,000, as well as the short uh, short form, which is up to $50,000 in funding. Um, and that comes uh, down to a lot of what the individual company's needs are. Um, sometimes companies will start with a short form and then maybe come back at a later time for a long-term grant. Um, what we really try to help people uh, at companies and, and organizations do is to really identify the needs of their organization and uh, to those tenants and what Jody mentioned, you know, we want to make sure that we understand what the company's needs are. 
uh, what the incumbent workers needs are um, or any new employees and then what that capacity looks like for our institution and how we can uh, grow or expand um, our offerings here both within our customized workforce education as well as within our credit programs. Um, you know, it's a it's a really rewarding uh, opportunity uh, when we can uh, work with employers. Uh, we have uh, created our own internal systems. We meet with those organizations on a weekly basis um, to see how our progress is going within the project to make sure that we're uh, uh, staying on schedule for delivering training and making sure that we understand employers uh, need to keep employees uh, doing their jobs at the same time as conducting that training. And so there's a lot of logistics and coordination that come with that. Um, and those are all parts that we here at South Central College strive to really uh, help with, as well as the reporting and the collection of the information that needs to go back to the state uh, for the proper uh, use of our state funds. Um, you know, uh, we really uh, do uh, start with that uh, strategic plan and needs, and then we work into uh, assisting people along the road to the grant writing process and the whole submission process as well. Um, you know, uh, we've worked with big and small companies, uh, and you know, when when you get feedback uh, from uh, uh, those employers at the end of those opportunities about. Um, how it's changed lives, you know, how it's changed uh, individuals uh, personally and professionally uh, is really great. Uh, we do everything from leadership to welding to machining, uh, you know, working with companies with electrical. Uh, we have a wide variety of organizations um, that we have been able to serve and uh, we're happy to uh, be a part of this uh, panel today. So thank you for having us here. Awesome. Tanya, would you say that mostly manufacturing, healthcare, or are there other industries as well that you work are working with? Um, those are some of the majority. Uh, we are working with an appliance um, organization, uh, Warner Stallion, uh, out of uh, nice. Minnesota here. So uh, that is uh, new um, in terms of an organization, um, but a lot of manufacturing. Um, and then um, we worked with Twin Cities Closet Company, which uh, does build and install. And so uh, we are seeing more variety in terms of uh, the organizations that are looking for assistance. But yes, the, the majority would be manufacturing. Perfect. Great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Great introductions and lots of information in there. Um, from here, I'm going to um, go ahead and, and ask Jessica and Eric a couple questions just about the grant process and, and how they kind of heard about the programs and what that led them to actually um, go ahead and um, actually apply for this grant. So Eric, I'm going to start with you. Um, wh what led you to, to go down this path? And, and was it an easy path? And, um, you know, we always hear about, you know, these grant processes and working with a big old bad government. Um, what can you tell us about that? Sure. I think we, we first became maybe seriously aware of the JCHIP program through um, a local employment um, consultant here in town. Um, we were exploring exploring avenues to grow our workforce and provide training for some of the skills that um, it's hard to hire for. Um, so she got us hooked up with the JTIP program and the application process was was super easy. Um, you know, we worked with our consultant um, to, to fully understand the program and how it might apply for our particular situation. Um, so once we kind of got our ducks in a row on Air Corps side and work through some of the logistics internally of how this might work. Um, the application process was was very easy and um, we've received funding for the last few years. Um, and I think we've brought maybe 40 ish people through the program or, um, have, or 40 ish people have um, benefited from the JTIP grant. Um, so it's been a huge help for us in growing our workforce, like I said, and, and teaching those skills that we need to grow our business. Um, so we're super thankful for the JTIP program, just in terms of um, assisting us, you know, um, building our business. It, it's really taken a lot of the load off of, of trying to find talented people for such a niche industry that we're in. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And Jessica, how about you? How did you learn about the program and, and why did you feel that it was a fit for your organization? 
Yeah, so I think I learned about the program actually from a CMMA meeting where they were discussing different grants and opportunities. Um, with purchasing a new piece of equipment, it's always daunting for some of the employees or operators, um, you know, a million dollar piece of equipment, they don't want to break anything or mess anything up. And so we wanted to make sure that they received the training to feel confident in their job, as well as um, being able to cross train others. Uh, where we just had one operator that was able to run the machine, um, being able to get additional operators, as well as upskill skilling them, um, you know, with the maintenance program, and then also with opportunities that they could move to programming. So as an operator, um, you know, they operate the machine first and really understand the machine, and then being able to cross train in programming. So giving them an opportunity to increase kind of job security and cross train. Um, the application process was very easy. I worked with Danielle actually a couple whether we would send the employees off and kind of looked at that pricing um, with hotels and um, transportation and then um, taking the training there versus having um, the equipment vendor come on site and what those prices would be. Um, we had the equipment vendor come on site, which I think was very satisfying for the employees here to work on their machine versus going to the vendor and working on a similar machine or just you know sitting in a class and getting training that they were able to um, talk about some of the issues or troubleshoot that they've seen come up um, in the past. They had a list of questions that they wanted to make sure that the vendor was able to answer while they were on site. Excellent, thank you. And CMMA um, is Central Minnesota um, Manufacturers Association, and that's an affiliation um, for manufacturers in Central Minnesota, and there's other affiliations throughout the state of Minnesota as well. So great, great plug, Jessica. Um, and um, Tanya, do you wanna talk a little bit about how you assist um, the um, employers with the application process for partnership grant since um, you would actually assist with that part? Right, uh, absolutely. So, um, you know, after our initial contact, it really comes down to trying to help uh, assess needs and, and getting that priority list um, designated, you know, what are what are the highest pain points that the organization is seeing and, and where can we get the most uh, growth? Um, we do work with a grant writer um, here at uh, SEC since we don't have anyone on, on staff. Um, and that uh, process is, is that we bring the grant writer in to, to hear those needs and to help us through that grant writing. Um, and then we help with the final submission. Um, once um, uh, a grant is approved, uh, we do work then with um, a deed. Uh, I work with Vicki Poloni specifically uh, here from South Central College. Uh, that uh, She is our, our contact uh, at MJSP um, to get all the proper uh, paperwork in place and filed um, uh, so that the grant can be fully funded. And then, uh, like I mentioned, part of uh, the asset that we've brought is, is that uh, we have created a number of um, uh, internal uh, systems for helping companies with the collection of their employees' time, you know, when they're in trainings, and so that we help really th help them document the in-kind uh, hours that are being accumulated and make sure that that component, as well as the number of people that we intend to train, um, is also uh, met or, or achieved to the best that we are possibly um, able to within um, all the aspects of the grant. So I think it's just really being that partner um, and walking with them and uh, incorporating them uh, with uh, our team here in Customized Workforce Education. Awesome. Thank you. And Eric, for the job training incentive program or the JTIP program, what type of training did you offer to your employees with that? And was most of that training done internally or was that something that um, you brought in trainers for that training? Yeah, it was mostly mostly internal training. Um, <clears throat> in the aviation industry, there's a couple certifications that um, people need to have in order to sign off on um, aircraft um, repairs. So um, we have a few A and P mechanics are called um, airframe and power plant certified mechanics. And 
that's a it's a, a pretty lengthy process to get certified in that. So we use those those employees who have that certification to teach our newer um, employees. Um, a lot of the ins and outs of restoring a vintage aircraft, um, you know, aviation specific uh, terminology or techniques related to vintage aircraft as well. We're, we're taught, um, we, we relied on in-house training mostly because there's not, there's not a school that we can send new employees to to learn how to restore vintage aircraft. You know, it's just not not a, a market that really exists. So um, to answer your question, a lot of it was done in-house and it's the in-house training was sort of a program we built over the last few years to be more efficient with it. Um, but we found that on the job training really works well for our business and our employees. Excellent. Do you, do you think that helped with employee turnover and the culture within your organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's sort of it sort of forced us to be very uh, strategic and intentional with our training, um, especially our on-the-job training. Um, you know, we were awarded this grant and we, we we made it a priority to use that money well. Um, so it, it forced us to be more organized, I'd say. And I, from what I've heard of, of new employees, they've appreciated that one-on-one -on -one time with our more experienced restoration mechanics. Um, we didn't force new employees to sit in front of a computer and try to learn learn skills. We put them on the shop floor with our more experienced people uh, to learn what they needed to know. So that worked well for us. Wonderful, great. So when this program is running, is 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 it something where um, the reimbursement then is it a reimbursement program after the the program is closed, or is it something that? Um, that you're reimbursed as the program is is taking place yeah reimbursing as as it's taking place um okay we sort of fold it into an employee's wages um in order to, to help offset some of the the growing pains of teaching someone new skills um so yeah to answer your question it's all part of um part of the, the program okay so it's in in steps and and jody that might be a question for you as well um, based on how the program is set up, if it's set up in in two year or three, you know, one, two, three year programs. I know ATIP is a smaller a grant program, so um, Jessica, you probably re received reimbursement, you know, after the program. Is that correct? Yeah. So actually, after the training was complete, um, they came out and they did the training in two to three days. So they did both of the training for the um basic and troubleshooting as well as the maintenance training so mm -hmm. um the invoice for the vendor to come out and then also the wages um, were then paid for and then filled out into a reimbursement form where we then were able to show payment to the vendor as well as like the checks that were provided to the vendor that those cleared um and the uh payroll for the um trainees that took the the training um, that was all submitted, and then uh, the reimbursement came, which came pretty fast. As you know, we filled out the paperwork and and sent that in. Awesome. And Tanya, same with with your programs, um, your reimbursement for the for the partnership grant. Obviously, that's that's probably the largest program, just with the up to four hundred thousand. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, in. Uh, our case, um, the funding and all the contracts come through South Central College. And then on a trimesterly basis, we submit our in-kind information along with um, a reimbursement form. So then the, the college is reimbursed on a trimester basis. Mm -hmm. And there's numerous colleges throughout the, the state that also do partnership grants as well, correct? Correct, yes, yeah. for sure. Perfect, great, great. Jody, did you want to add anything to to that at all about reimbursements? Um, no, I don't think so. The only thing I would say is, um, yeah, all of our programs pay on a reimbursement basis, some throughout the project, some at the end. Um, one of the things with like the JT program, we need to make sure um, by statute it's required that they've added new jobs, so we can't reimburse until we know those new jobs are in place and retained. Um, the ATIP programs or grants are usually 
pretty short term. So um, they're generally, like I said, probably closer to six months, um, sometimes go up to a year. So yep, um, not a extremely long time that the business goes before they're reimbursed, but yep, they're all on a reimbursement basis. Yeah. So on average for for these grants, Jody, would you say um, for the automation training grant, like you said, it's probably six months to a year um, for job training incentive program. Is that usually about a two year um, program? I would say in, they probably average about a year, but they okay. can, can go. Um, it gets a little bit complicated. And this is where you want to talk to um, a grant coordinator because those mm -hmm. funds we get an allocation every year, but they expire. So we have one year to award the funds and then one year for them to be spent. So if you apply at sure. the beginning of a fiscal year, you can have close to two years to complete your project. If sure. you're applying closer to the end of our fiscal year, you've got one year. So sure. um, I would say it's important to talk to, um, or I would encourage you to talk to MJSP to um, be aware sure. of any of those timeline type issues before you get started. Sure. And, and same with partnership grant, is that usually a two year? Um, the partnership grants are anywhere typically from a year to three years, depending on the size. So I'd say if you're getting above the 200, 250,000 amount, um, they'll typically go for three years. Okay. Um, those grants, the funds don't expire for our partnership program. So we're not on a, as tight of a timeline, like where we have an absolute end date, um, but we don't like those grants to go beyond three years. Sure. Great. I saw Danielle pop on too. Danielle, did you want to add anything to that? No. You're good. No, no. Okay. Jody did. Great. Awesome. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that because I know that's usually where people are like, how long are these grants? How does that, that reimbursement work? So thank you for clarifying all of that. That's awesome. Um, and then since then, now that you guys have kind of used these these grants, Eric and Jessica, has this led to you kind of looking at other grant opportunities and maybe like doing other trainings or um, expansions within your organizations and, and maybe pursuing some other opportunities? Yeah, I'll, I'll I start can. with I'll start with Jessica. Go ahead. Sorry about All right. that. Sounds good. No. Um, yes, yeah, so we have the laser table that we had purchased in, um, you know, a couple of years ago had that automation training. Um, recently, we have purchased a CNC lathe that our operators are working on, um, but opportunity to definitely tap into automation training grants and looking at um, more education with that new piece of equipment. So as we are looking to um, continue purchasing new equipment. I know a press break is on the list um, in the next couple of years. That would be something that we would be looking at um, doing the automation training grant again. We are looking at doing an expansion too um, in this next first quarter of 2025 um, and redoing some flow within the uh, shop. So as we purchase new, new equipment, um, definitely would, would apply as well. Excellent. So a lot of these grants can be stackable with other other grants that are available throughout um, throughout DEED and, and uh, the state. So that's great. Eric, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, was, I think things that you're doing? Right. Uh, we don't have any plans for this yet, but I think I think one area we'd like to explore is um, using some of these grant funding to expand our fabrication capabilities and training our training new fabrication um, employees in terms of you know CNC machining and some of our other sheet metal type um, projects that we work on. Um, you know we've had a lot of success on the restoration side through the JTIP program and I feel like we're pretty well versed in the program and how to roll it out and how to give our employees the training the training they need. So um, I think it was something that we would look into more um, using some of these grant funding sources to to grow other aspects of our business like our fabrication side excellent great one other question i want to ask you before we get too far pretty soon we're going to be wrapping this up and going into our unplugged um just wanted to ask you you know what kind of advice would you give 
to somebody who is really looking at doing these um, grants or, or looking into this? What What is something that you didn't know about this that you wish you would have known before jumping in? So I'll start with you, Jessica. Um, sure. I think the, I mean, the application process was very easy. Danielle did a great job as the grant coordinator um, since this was the first time uh, for us applying, um, being able to ask questions or what information I should include in the application. There is a progress report, uh, which she had mentioned, um, kind of gave some advice to make sure to have that paperwork ready. So when the training is happening on site, um, making sure that you have the details of who participated in the training, how many hours that the vendor was here for giving the training, um, and then the employee signs off as well as the vendor signing off. So if you don't do it the day of, it's always just kind of hard to go back and um, get that information. So that was a really great tip of just having the paperwork ready on that the day that the training is happening and gathering all your information so it's easy to submit um, and and it worked out really great. Excellent. Eric? Uh, for sure. I think the advice I would give would be for any for any business in sort of a niche market like like Air Corps Aviation is, uh, well, one would be to explore uh, the JTIP program. It really, uh, really helped us grow our, our workforce in uh, in ways that we maybe couldn't do otherwise, just in terms of finding employees with, with skills, existing skills that we need. Um, we were able to train employees to the kind of Air Corps standard, um, which helps us out um, in terms of, uh, you know, retention and, and, uh, and recruitment as well. Um, I think that would be my, my foremost advice would just be explore JTIP. Um, as an option, and then also, if if it's your first go around with the grant, um, think about think about what training looks like for your specific organization. Um, you know, the first cycle of JTIP that we had, uh, we sort of had to build build our training from scratch a little bit. We knew what we wanted to um, accomplish, but some of the background administrative pieces of that had to be built out. So just something to keep in mind as you're exploring something like this. Um, know that there's a little bit more work that has to be done on the back end than just um, receiving the grant and, and hitting the ground running. Excellent. Great advice. Tanya, what advice would you give employers on, on doing this partnership grant and, and walking through the steps of training? Yeah. Um, so have you, you got to have your team on board. Um, you know, uh, once these grants are um, uh, looked into is uh, across from leadership to your operations to your HR, um, getting your organization on board and, and communicating uh, that the grant is um, a prospect and what that looks like um, so that when it comes time to actually uh, conduct the training that people aren't surprised or not aware of, of what uh, has been put into process. Uh, th those lead to more successful outcomes and um, that they help the employees uh, uh, really get the best training they uh, possible because um, it's been worked into the schedule. You know, we're talking about manufacturers, you, you have products to get out, but you know, how do we uh, go from a system that's tribal knowledge and, and capture that information so that when new employees are coming in and, um, uh, you know, what Eric and, and Jessica are speaking of is how, how do we maintain those skills? So sustainability is what we really like to talk to employers about. Um, we want something that, you know, we come in and we use the state's funds, but how do they start a system? How do they build on that? So with each training and each learning, it's incorporating into their internal system at their organization so that they can maintain that uh, for future um, uh, incumbent workers and future new employees that will need specific or related training. So um, we want it to be a, a place where it can grow and expand and be sustainable and and that is what our goal is when we work along with those employers. Phenomenal, great advice. 
And that's the great thing about the partnership grant is, is not only do you build it for them, but you leave them with that information and um, they have that for their future as well for all their new and incumbent workers as they continue to grow. So that's a really great, great sound advice, Tanya. Uh, so the partnership grant again is when you work with uh, um, the educational system and they they oversee that program and there's a $50,000 uh, short form or a $400,000 um, grant uh, through, through DEED, uh, through the MGSP um, grant. Uh, program and then we have the ATIP, which is the Automation Training Incentive Program, and that is up to thirty-five thousand dollars for uh, employers who have um, one hundred and fifty or less employees that are doing um, some sort of new equipment or um, uh, training with that. And then our last one was Job Training Incentive Program, which is JTIP. And that is when you're hiring three or more new employees um, at your your company, and that can be up to um, two hundred thousand um, dollars in funding that is available for you. So if you do have questions, you can definitely reach out um, to Jody and her team. We'll definitely be putting all of this information out on our Career Force website and sharing all of these details with you if you registered for this otherwise it will be on the career force website under workforce wednesday um, thank you all we are going to go ahead and just transition at this time and um, go ahead and talk a little bit about next month for workforce wednesday i'm going to turn it over to james whirlwind soldier thank you so much and uh, then we are going to stay put for anybody who has questions and want to do a deep dive and do our unplug so go ahead oh and sorry we do have some presentation resources if you do have more questions those are available and i think we can go to the next one and more deed resources and james i'm going to hand it on over to you thanks stella thanks everybody this was a really great conversation i really appreciate everybody uh, coming today um, and we would like to thank you all for joining us for this main session. Uh, we would love it if you all stuck around for the unplug session, which is going to come, just like Dell said, right now, uh, where you can unmute yourselves, turn your cameras on, and ask questions directly to our, our panelists. We would love it if you did that. Um, also, please take some time to complete the survey today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. For everyone that registered, we'll be sending you out a recording and resources, including a link for that um, for that. Uh, survey. We use that survey to decide and, and choose what kind of topics we're going to cover over the next year. Um, and as we're coming into 2025, uh, that information is very, very important to us. Excuse me. Um, yes, and I, I'm sorry I got these slides mixed up. Please join us for next month's Workforce Wednesday. Here it is, I'm sorry about that. It'll be on November 6th, the Evolving Native American Workforce and Indigenous Economy. A lot of great things are happening across the state with our Indigenous neighbors. Join us to, to hear from them, hear from actual job seekers from the Native demographic and, and listen to uh, their experiences. Uh, like I mentioned, registration is uh, open right now. You can also check out our upcoming session topics and resources, blogs, uh, and different ways to engage with your reason, regional strategy consultant at careerforce.minnesota.com. Uh, you can also sign up to receive our emails for reminders about these events, our newsletters, blogs, and so on and so forth. Again, all of that is going to be at uh, careerforcemn.com forward slash Workforce Wednesday. And yes, let's go ahead and start the unplug session. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Can everybody see me? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, I don't even know where to start. I got a bunch of questions. And Jody, just be on deck because I've got some questions for you too. 